In previous discussions, we've talked about a number of different types of coordinate systems. These U.S. Geological Survey maps have a lot of different coordinate systems that are provided for us. And so I wanted to go through and talk a little bit about a few of them and how we find them on these particular maps. When we are looking for latitude and longitude, um, those are really, really straightforward. Um, these maps are actually seven and a half minute maps. Again, we're looking at the Lyle Washington uh, map, although it's right on the border between um, Washington and Oregon. But in each corner, it actually provides for us the coordinates that are there in that corner. So at this um, lower right corner, um, it tells us what the latitude is in degrees, minutes, and seconds all along the bottom of this map. And it tells us um, what the degrees, minutes, and seconds are along this edge. So when we are looking all along the bottom, um, the latitude there is going to be 45 minutes, 37 seconds. And I'm sorry, 45 minutes, 45 degrees, 37 minutes, 30 seconds. And then we can scroll all the way over here to the other corner and it's the same thing, right? So 45 degrees, 37 and 30. And they actually provide this for us in every corner. All right. Now, one thing that you will notice, um, if we're starting over the prime meridian, then uh, we're going to be increasing from right to left. And so we're at 121 degrees, 15 minutes here. And then on the other corner, we come over here and we're at 121 degrees, 22 minutes, 30 seconds. That's seven and a half minutes more, right? So it isn't seven and a half minutes takes you to drive across the map. It's seven and a half minutes of degrees of distance um, across the map and going up and down the map as well. So let's explore that just a smidge. Going to zoom out a little bit. So along the bottom, we established that we're at 45 degrees, 37 minutes, 30 seconds, if I can say it right. And when we go all the way to the top of the map, grab this guy to no, not there. Then we're at 45 degrees, 45 minutes. Again, seven and a half minutes. Now, it doesn't just give us that for our latitude and longitude. As we have been moving up and down or from side to side on this particular map, there's other numbers that are there. But what they've done is they've knocked off the 45. So if we take 37 minutes, 30 seconds, and we go up two and a half minutes, then that's going to take us to 40 minutes. Okay? Now, this is going to be about a third of the way up the map that we start to find this. And then if we go up another third of the map, then we're going to find it again. There's 42.30 okay? right in there. And so every two and a half minutes, they go through and they will provide that for us. Not only that, they do that along the bottom as well, and you'll see a number there, and you'll see a number right there. But what this also is going to do is they're going to be putting a little crosshair on the map. So I know that we're zoomed way out. There's going to be our 20 minutes, and there's our 40 minutes of latitude, 20 minutes of longitude. And you'll see right in here, there's going to be a small little crosshair. Right. Basically, what we've done is taken the whole map, divided up into um, nine little areas, and so we get the little crosshair. More detail than that, then we're going to need to like get out a ruler and everything else like that to determine what our latitude and longitude is for specific locations. Another coordinate system that is provided on these maps is going to be our universal transverse mercator. Um, and information for that is going to be here in this lower corner. So uh, North American datum 1927. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oregon coordinate system. We'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, yeah. Oregon, Washington. Good. Blue, 1,000 meter universal transverse mercator ticks zone 10. So in the discussion about the universal transverse mercator, there were a number of different zones. This is going to be applicable to zone 10. 
10 for this particular map. Now we have these little blue tick marks here and blue tick marks here, but I want to show you in one spot where it really kind of clarifies what's going on. Okay? Notice, and we're going to zoom in again because it's really, really small. Notice right here that it has all the numbers. We'll find this in the opposite corner as well, but we have five zero six seven zero 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 meters north. All right now this five zero it's going to be the same thing for the entire map so a lot of times what they've done is they've taken off that five zero they've taken off the zero 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 and uh they've simplified things just a little bit sometimes they leave the little 50 and the big number but they certainly will take off the thousand meters uh, to the north and to the east all right so this is going to be how many meters north from the beginning of that particular UTM zone, in this case, zone 10. And here it's going to be how many meters to the east it is from the lower left corner of um, that particular zone. So 627,000 meters to the east. Now they don't repeat all of this each time, but um, sometimes they run into other things. We'll talk about this guy in just a second, but um, sometimes uh, they just have a little blue tick mark. So that would be 628. And that's a thousand meters across. 629 is there. 630, 631. There would be 632, 633. Um, for the degrees and minutes, notice how the black line goes down. Here's the blue line that intersects there. 634, 635, and there's 637. Okay. Same thing that we're going to be seeing going north and south. If we look over on this side, it's 567. And again, we're going back down, right? So there's um, uh, 5 million, 66, 000, 5 million, or 5065, right? And that's going to be 1,000 meters between both of those. Okay. It's mainly going to be in the upper left corner and the lower right corner that you really get the whole breakdown of everything. Okay. So as you're looking at these maps, that will be probably the most helpful. Now, this map is a little bit tricky because it overlaps two different states. And so some of the lines and the marks are going to be for the organ information, the organ coordinate system, um, and what zone, right? This is going to be our state plane system. It's going to be the organ coordinate system for the north zone. However, at the top part of the map, we're over there in Washington. Most of the time, the maps are not going to be, at least a map that's going to be just for one state, won't need to go in for information for both of these. But uh, for Washington, I believe that both Oregon and Washington just have a north zone and a south zone. California, we've numbered all of our zones, but in the lower uh, map corner, it gives us that information. All right. That's where these other big numbers are going to be. All right. And so it's going through and it really doesn't give us as much information um, as much as we saw for the latitude and longitude. It doesn't give us as much information for our um, state plane coordinate systems um, as we see for those others. But it does give some information. So um, we zoom back out. Here's going to be uh, 1,800,000 feet here in Washington. Uh, 1,780,000 feet uh, in Oregon. And so it gets a little confusing with Oregon and Washington. Here's a Washington value that we have right here, uh, right? These grids are overlapping. The two zones are overlapping on this particular map. Okay, here's going to be another Oregon value, even though it's it's Oregon, Washington. Very good. So another Oregon value. There's our Washington value, and we see those different state plane systems um, going through there. The last um, big idea that we see, and we really don't see as much in the color of the map, this is really going to be something that we see actually on the map, but that's going to be our township and range system. All right. uh, we do see a little bit. And so, for example, right here, you'll see a boundary line. It's going to be a little bit darker line that's going through there. It kind of gets lost as we come across into uh, the other state. Okay. Um, but that's going to be the difference between Township 2 North and Township 3 North. All right. We'll see these same types of numbers and values going across the top. If we have a border, here's going to be range 11 East and a range 12 East. 
Okay. So remembering that we're going to be going east and west, we're going to be going north and south from a certain starting point. Here in the Sacramento Valley, we use bound, uh, we use a Mount Diablo. And that's going to be that number that we have. Now we know that that's going to be divided up into different townships. And so we're going to zoom out just a little bit here. And we're going to start to see those townships numbered in these red numbers. And so uh, starting up here, we have 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. It comes down 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And then it starts to get lost a little bit with the river, but we start to see it picking up um, with some other numbers, some other values that we see over here. Now, as we're looking at these individual townships, um, we really will start to see how some of the areas, this is a very mountainous area on this particular map, but other maps you'll start to see where the road system follows along uh, where those initial boundaries were located. Right? On this particular map, we do have some forested areas. And so we have that really dark kind of um, not quite um, slightly translucent um, line that we have there letting a little bit of the other color through that's going to be a boundary right so we're mainly looking at these red big squares and then the numbers so we will eventually start to see areas where the road system starts to kind of break these guys into smaller sections um and and so forth mainly in uh, agricultural areas you'll see that on a large large scale So really, um, these topographic maps provide us a lot of information, latitude and longitude, universal transverse mercator, state plane systems, as well as the township and range, the public land survey. A lot of the information about what it's representing, everything else like that, we're going to find down here in this corner. So it's never a bad idea to read this information.